postpartum. The barn cat slinks onto the porch and stretches out across a swatch of afternoon sun. Last night, she left a tiny headless rabbit bleeding on the mat. Did you know a baby rabbit is called a kit, short for kitten? It's a funny thing the way we name our progeny. A kitten is not a cat or a rabbit even. An infant is not a man. The sun was once something called a protostar an embryo born under the weight of a dust cloud's own collapse. Billions of years later, the barn cat is picking fur from between her toes and somewhere in the tall grass, a rabbit is missing. For shame, one. Sugar mint smoke on my lips, that first Virginia Slims menthol behind the tennis courts at a football game, 30 yards from a fallow field where 30 years before, my father charged an offensive line so many times that the knot on his brow sunk deep into the memory meat of his frontal lobe. Forget it, father, for I have sinned. With cigarette pinned between prepubescent lips, I blow, don't suck, don't know yet the power of a hungry inhale, snake swallow and syrupy release. Smoke spills from the red hot tip, dissolves into the thick cinnamon air of October over time. But what is smoke and what is just my own wet breath? Two, Valentine's Day, and this man is asking me if I need cash. He has it while he shifts across the sleet slick streets of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. No, I say it's fine. Tonight, my big first time, we two drunk strangers on a cat hair covered futon slumped on the soggy floor. The bars of its base flare like ribs against the wall, but there's nothing inside. Nothing beating, nothing singing, just nearby bodies doing their best. Naked, I can touch the edges of childhood and this man is 30 with chest hair and an ex-wife. Here's an empty hungry man platter he's fashioned into an ashtray, an overturned beer can, a TV on crates. Once more, he offers to pay me. I tell him no, I promise nothing. Three, bone white pills and tap water. Anesthesia is optional if you're old enough. I stare at the clinic's pimpled ceiling and the drifters sing, there goes my baby. Serendipitous track list piped through the bulletproof building. Moving on down the line. Can I erase it all like chalk? The father soon just a man again. I told him not to come and this time he didn't. Wonder where, wonder where, wonder where. The lie of one night, draining glasses and the way he caught me when I slipped. His steady hand, sure as a father's. I thought, something inside me has shut down like a factory. Lights out for the last time, folks gone for good. Only thing left, the scatter of trapped birds that out of necessity built their homes in the rafters. Four. At six, I learned of original sin, that ink black stain on all our souls, the sexual indiscretion of the first man and his second wife, Lilith in the shadows. What does it mean to be born damned? I can never say it enough, our father, though I'll finger these beads till their paint rubs off and at night whisper, oh God, into the darkness of an empty street or the ear of some nameless man. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. They told me when unbaptized infants die, they wait in limbo, sit with malformed limbs and prayerless mouths. But when he comes for them, won't he be nothing? A shape they can't see, movement and light they won't remember.
I think part of why I wanted to read this series, um, which are scattered uh, sort of across the first half of the book, too, is because, um, you know, there's always a perpetual debate, but it, it is picked up recently about MFA programs. And I do remember in my MFA program, you know, hearing like, oh, write about something else. Um, as if this was sort of like a, a non-issue. And so I think it's really interesting to see over a decade uh, or so um, how things have shifted and how much our individual stories remain vital um, and are never really irrelevant. So I think for anybody who, who's writing out there, uh, that's an important thing to remember. For what I am about to do, this morning, an angel hangs by a thread, cartoonish and carved out of softwood. She twirls circles above me, manipulated by the pulse of a ceiling vent. Her purple dress is airless, static, cut clumsy as the rest of her. I am laid out below, open-legged, like a pair of discarded scissors rusting in the grass. My starched hospital gown smells like driftwood and bleach, natural rot and our chemical penance. The drugs are taking effect. If I were an angel without the weight of desire above the realm of human shame, I would never dress. My body would be a collection of little prayers, the mouth of meeting thighs, Hanging breasts like bended knees, folds of skin that soften the edges of my torso, thumbprint dimples on my lower back, proof of God's touch. As a young girl, I cradled a sweater stuffed under my dress. Every childhood game began or ended with the act of birth. The closet, a delivery room, I exited alone, arms wrapped around a plastic doll, my fingers stained purple, grape ice pop dye, the Valium, the Demerol, the hum of the medical vacuum like cicadas in the backyard. Outside my childhood bedroom, the trees were so tall. They housed a thousand lives in each of them. Outside this room, there is an armed guard, bulletproof glass, the rest of my life. Okay, and I'm going to uh, close out with two shorter poems. Uh, this one is called The Women's Clinic in Antioch, Tennessee. On the outskirts of Nashville, behind the hospital, a little house, brick ranch with a half moon drive, vertical blinds just physical, visible behind narrow windows tinted and bulletproof because there's a picket fence of protesters, because there's a city full of God-fearing folks who've taught their children to hate us, because there are a thousand tiny white crosses planted on the front lawn of my grade school. I came here to worship at the wall of glass and the security guard behind it, to make my confession, to take my communion with this congregation of women, not mothers, not us. The body of Christ repels her. I came to be absolved by the humming machine. Its cleansing arm extracts a piece of me that wouldn't even flicker on the screen. By accident. I find myself in Tokyo with the almost father of my almost firstborn. It is midnight on a Tuesday in a rose garden and I am washing my hands, ladling cool water over the left, then the right, then sipping from a cupped palm. This would be a prayer at home, but here it is forgiveness. The almost father positions my face by a particular flower and takes a photo. Thanks y'all. <laughs>